Hello all. Today I would like to teach you regarding the disease condition teniasis that is from community health nursing. So mainly we will discuss regarding the epidemiology and life cycle of the disease. So coming to the topic here, these are a group of cystoid infections which are important zoonotic diseases and there are two parasites which are occurring in the teniasis disease. So this teniasis disease are mainly caused by this tenia sagnata and tenia solium and these are classified as cyclozoonosis. Why? Because they require more than one vertebrate to complete their total life cycle. So no invertebrate is involved here. The only vertebrate, uh, the only host for this uh, tenia sangita or tenia solium is the vertebrate host. So if they want to complete their total developmental life cycle, they need at least two vertebrate hosts. Coming to the problem statement here, the first one tenia sagnata. So this parasite is virtually global in distribution means it is everywhere in the world where the beef is being eaten and the highly endemic areas here if you see the prevalence rate it is exceeding more than 10%. So if you see the countries here, African countries and so, uh, south of Sahara and uh, eastern Mediterranean countries and some parts of this USSR. So these are the highly endemic regions that we can observe in the disease. Tania sagnata. And if you see here, there is a moderate prevalence rate, means the prevalence rate is little bit modern and in the European countries and most of the Indian subcontinent and Southern Asia and also in Japan. In these areas, the, pre uh, the prevalence rate is in a moderate range. And if you see the countries such as Australia, Canada and USA, these are generally regarded as low endemic areas and uh, the prevalence rate is less than 0.1%. What is the highest prevalence rate here? The prevalence rate highest is about more than 10%, mainly in the countries of African countries that are south of the Sahara and in Eastern Mediterranean countries and some parts of this USSR. And next one is, it is present moderate in the countries such as Europe and India and Southern Asia and in Japan. The countries like Australia, Canada and USA, these generally are regarded as low endemic areas. Coming to the larval stages of this T. sagnata, which is, no, which is called as Cysticeres bovis. It is almost occurring all over the world. And coming to the incidence rate in the, in the African countries, this larval stage you can observe about 80 to, sorry, 30 to 80 percent of the sluggard animals. But in coming to the European countries, it is found that there was only 0.3 to 4 percent in the sluggard animals. What is the stage? The larval stage of this T. sagnata, which is called as Cysticeres bovis. Coming to the endomacy. So, this is the chart for the endomacy rate of the tenia solium. Till now, we have discussed regarding the tenia sagnata. Now, we will see regarding the tenia solium. So, coming to the tenia solium here, if you see uh, in this picture, this red, uh, red, bright red, it indicates the endemicity and this light red color, it indicates the suspected endemic areas. And if you see this uh, very uh, light red here, these are the areas with few peaks, uh, few peaks but uh, with risk factors. And this uh, dark gray, they indicate no data is available from these type of countries. And if you see here, countries which are reporting more than five imported cases per an year are Argentina. Canada, Spain and United States of America. So this uh, picture was taken from the World Health Organization website. So if you are interested, you can just check out the World Health Organization website also. Coming to this uh, tenia solium. So this tenia solium, if you see, as I said, it is endemic in lot of countries. So it is involving the countries such as Latin America, Africa, Asia, as well as some parts of the Europe. So from these reasons, from, from the parts of Europe and from the parts of this USSR. So, from these reasons, so many countries were involving in this disease, tenia solium. So, if you see here, it is an endemic disease in India and has widely reported. So, the human cysterosis, it is mainly caused by the tenia solium, is far most important health problem than the human teniasis. So, the mainly, we, the tenia, the cysterosis, the cystic cirrhosis, it is caused by the tenia solium. It is very important public health problem compared to the human teniasis. Coming to the hosts of the infection. So, if you see here this tenia sagnata, it is occurring between the men and the cattle. And this tenia solium, it is occurring in between the men and the 
pigs. So as I said, the life cycle it require two hosts. It require two hosts. So we have seen in the previous slides here. Uh, if you see here, this was known as this was classified as cyclozoonosis. Why? It require more than one vertebrate host species. It is requiring more than one vertebrate host species. So what are the hosts here? So mainly the uh, the and in in case of Tinea sagnata, it is involving the cattle and it is involving the men. In case of Tinea solium, it is involving the pigs and it is involving the men here. So these are the two vertebral hosts. And in men, the adult parasite it will live in the small intestine. And the adult uh, Tinea sagnata it measures up to five to twelve meters in length. And sometimes you can see even absorb, you can even absorb 24 meters. And if you see this tinea solium, it is about 2 to 6 meters in length. So, what is the length of this tinea uh, sagnata? It can measure up to 5 to 12, but sometimes you can see even 24 meters also. If the tinea solium, it is measuring from 2 meters to 6 meters in length. So, these are the hosts of infection here, tinea sagnata. So, the definitive host is man here and the intermediate host is cattle that is C. bovis. And the tinea solium, it is occurring in the man and the intermediate host is pig that is C. cellulase. So, coming to the larval stage of this tinea sagnata. So, it is mainly occurring in the cattle. And if you see the pigs, the larval stage of the tinea solium which is C. cellulase, it is occurring in the pigs. So, the men may be also infected here. If you see, it will lead to muscular, ocular and cerebral cystirosis. So, these are the stages, mainly the parasitic stage of this tinea sagnata, it is occurring in the, the larval stage, it is occurring in the cattle and the larval stage of the tinea solium, it is occurring in the pigs here. So, the adult stages of the tinea sagnet and tinea solium may persist for several years in an infected human. So, it, if a human being is infected with this tinea sagnet or tinea solium, the infection will stay with the human for several long years. So, you can, uh, you can see the mixed infections of both parasites. So, at the same time, this both parasite infections can occur in a person. So, if you see here, the lifespan of the C cellulose in man is not known. But it is suspected that it will stay for many years. Coming to the mode of transmission here. So, as I said, this disease is mainly transmitted to men through, ne, through the ingestion of means through consumption of an infected meat. And also, whenever the feces or the, uh, or the food materials which are contaminated by the eggs of the tinea, tinea sagnata or tinea solium, then this disease is being resulted here. So, here through the ingestion of food, water or vegetables which are contaminated by the eggs or sometimes when a reinfection also can occur by the transport of eggs from the bowel to stomach by the retroperistalsis movement. And this is very rare in condition, mostly you will, you, the person is getting the infection mainly through eating the uncooked means undercooked beef or undercooked pork. So, whenever they are consuming the raw pork or raw, raw meat or raw beef, then the disease uh, tinea sagnata or tinea solium is resulting based on the intermediate host. If it is cattle, it will result in the tinea sagnata. If it is pork, if it is pig, it is resulting in the tinea solium. So, if you see here, this was the life cycle here, not life cycle. This is how the uh, disease gets transmitted from one person to from person to person. So, here, whenever a man is consuming the uncooked meat, a man is ingesting the raw or uncooked meat, the tinea solium or the tinea sagnata, they are getting an attached into the small intestine. So, this in the small intestine, the next stage of the tinea solium and tinea sagnata will take place. So, mainly they are in the occurring in the adult small intestine. So, after that, whenever the human is shedding the feces, the eggs or the gravid proglottides in the feces are passed into the environment. Means, whenever the person is going for open defecation, so here, Whenever he is defecating with the feces, through the feces, the eggs of the tinea sagnata and tinea solium are getting passed into the environment. So, here, whenever the human feces are contaminating the environment and if the pigs or the cattle are consuming 
the infected grass or the feces directly by the pigs. It is resulting in the ingestion of this tenes agnet and tenes oleum into the cattle here. So, in, in the cattle, as I said, the larval stages are occurring in this cattle. So, the, the larval stages will occur and they will settle mainly in the intestinal walls and they will also settle in the uh, muscular, musculars of the muscles of the or animals. So, whenever a human being is consuming the meat, again, which is uncooked, you can see here, which is uh, the oncosperesis develop into the cysteresis in the muscle. So, whatever the infected larvae is present, it is going and developing as a cysteresis in the muscle of the animal. So, whenever the human beings are consuming the meat, animal consuming the animal in the form of meat, again, whenever it is raw, raw or uncooked, the infected meat is con in getting in, uh, the infected meat is infecting the human being here. So, this is the cycle. So, if, if you see here, this blue line, it indicates the parasitic life cycle and uh, this red line, it indicates the points of intervention and this uh, light blue, it indicates the diagnostic uh, material here. So, if you see here, coming to the life cycle, so how the human is getting infected? Human is getting infected through uncooked meat ingestion. So, whenever the human being is getting infected here, so the uh, organism will go and it will settle in the, it will settle in the uh, intestines, mainly in the small intestine. So, whenever the human uh, organism is going and settling in the small intestine, it is laying the eggs. These eggs are, these eggs are indirect, directly excreted through feces into the external environment. So, whenever the external environment is consuming here, these eggs are consumed by the pigs or the cattle. Again, if you see here, the pigs, the pig, in the pigs, uh, the other larval stages will occur and uh, it, the organism, it will go and settle in the tissues, it, in the edible tissues, means the tissues which we, the human beings will consume. So, here what is happening? Uh, the pigs are getting infected. So, how to prevent the human from getting this infection means mainly how you can prevent, first of all, whenever the man is consuming the meat. So, where, where you can prevent, I, uh, I will explain you in this uh, cycle here. So, whenever a man is consuming the meat, so before the meat consumption, meat inspection should be done and slogger control should be there and proper cooking. Whenever a person cooks properly and take the food, we can avoid lots of diseases. Next thing, the human got infected. If you are able to diagnose the person with this tenia, so if you are giving the treatment, if you are hitting the organism with the current antibiotic, with the correct antibiotic, then the disease can be prevented and the spreading of the eggs into the environment can be stopped through proper teniasis treatment. Next one. Here, unfortunately, we are unable to give the treatment and the human uh, had already spread the infection. So, first what we can do is, we can prevent the cysterosis in the pig here. How you can prevent? Mainly, whenever you are doing the sanitization, whenever sanitation improvement is going on and pig husbandry practice is going on, proper vaccination of the pigs, these, uh, these things will prevent the infection in the pigs so that the meat is not getting, uh, the meat is not getting infected here. And uh, if you see in human beings, uh, the human beings not only spread the infection, but later all stages also can occur in the human being. So, whatever the X which are there, the, it, they are going and directly affecting the human brain. So, infection to the human brain, brain it will result in the neurocysterosis and it may cause uh, uh, severe symptoms such as epilepsy. So, what you can do here? So, prevention of this human... Uh, Neuro, uh, neurocysterosis. So, how mainly we have to give proper public education and we have to go for the sanitation improvement so that these diseases, the, these diseases can be prevented. So, once the human is entering into the neurocysterosis, so what you can do is you can go for the early diagnosis and you can treat the person. So, these are the interventions that can be taken place. So, this is regarding the tenes oleum life cycle and where uh, where you, have, you can interfere with the tenes oleum life cycle and where we can go for the diagnostic procedures. So, I will discuss clearly in the coming points also. Coming to the incubation period of the disease. So, if you see the incubation period, the incubation period of the disease is about 8 to 14 weeks. Coming to the clinical illness. If you see the clinical illness here, the impact of this tapeworm infection in man is difficult to quantify because so vast majority of the cases, they will not show any kind of clinical symptoms. So, 
you will have some abdominal discomfort, anorexia will be there and chronic indigestion will be there. So, only these are the problems, but particularly it will not show any kind of signs and symptoms and uh, you can observe straying of the proglottitis and uh, it may sporadically cause appendicitis and cholangitis. And the most serious risk for the tenous oleum infection is mainly the cystrosis. Whenever it is affecting the brain, it will result in the epilepsy. Coming to the condition, human cystosarcosis. So, if you see here, it is mainly resulting when a healthy human individual is infected with the eggs, mainly the eggs of the tenous oleum, which is entering into the healthy human through contaminated water or contaminated food or sometimes regurgitated eggs that is from the small intestine, which is also called as auto infection. So, what is happening here? The eggs which are in the intestine, they will leave the small intestine via, the, via hepatic portal system. They will use the hepatic portal system and they will disappear throughout the body and wherever uh, they, wherever the site is uh, suitable for their growth, there they will develop and form this cysticerci. So, if you see here, this uh, cysticerci, it, uh, it will later on develop and in the central lymphatic system, it is mainly causing the neurocysticercosis. So, here if you see here, this is resulting in a serious condition. So, because of the mechanical pressure and because of the obstruction and inflammation and variety of pathological changes that are produced, it will lead to the epilepsy and intracranial hypertensive syndromes and you can even observe the hydrocephalus and psychiatric diseases and sometimes death also can occur because of this human cysticercosis. So, how you can control this? This is tenuous volume. So, there are different methods. First one is treatment of the infected persons. Next one is meat inspection, health education and adequate sewage treatment and disposal. So, proper sanitation will prevent the disease. Mainly the, uh, the eggs which are present in the environment is not consumed by the human beings, healthy individual and proper health education. So, they will follow the cooking principle so that the meat which is, the meat which is being cooked is not undercooked and if you see the meat inspection so before the meat is consumed by the uh, society or the public if you if the examiner is coming and uh, inspecting the meat we can prevent the lot of diseases and the treatment of the infected persons so mainly what we can do is early detection and early treatment of the tenuous oleum cases is essential because if, if you want to prevent the cysticercosis you have to go for early diagnosis and early treatment so the drugs which were used are parazinquital and niclosamide so these are the treatments which are available presently and the other thing you can do is surgical removal of the producing cyst so mainly uh, in case of, so it is it can be cured by this treatment itself, but if it is required, they will go for the surgical removal of the symptom producing cysts. Next one is, in many countries, this tenuous oleum, it is mainly controlled by the meat inspection. Means, before the, uh, before the meat is consumed by the individuals, they are mainly checking the meat so that if it, any meat which is having this infection, it is terminated. And uh, through cooking of beef and pork in most effective method to prevent the foodborne infections and uh, educating the public mainly to prevent the pollution of soil, water and uh, food with human feces and uh, they have to wash hands before eating and the wash hands after the defecation. It, uh, so, proper health education is given to these persons so that they follow the high standards of living means standards of the living. Next one is improving the living conditions. So, where they are able to treat their drinking water, where they are able to treat their sewage which is used. So, all these things will come, they will come and they will play a crucial role in controlling the disease, tenia solium. Coming to the treatment, as I said, the drugs are paraziquital and niclosamide. If you see this, uh, uh, this paraziquital and the niclosamide, so these, they are effective in more than 90% of the patient. And uh, this paracinquital, it is given as a single dose that is of 10 mg per kg body weight and the uh, cure rate is about 99% and uh, no side effects are there. E uh, even though the side effects are there, they are very minimal. Coming to the niclosamide, so single dose of 4 tablets that is of 2 grams of niclosamide we are giving. Uh, so, we can observe more than 90% of the cure rate. So, it is given in the early morning with the empty stomach and the tablets they must be chewed and swallowed with the water and the eating may be resumed. So, whenever the person is taking this tablet, he has to stop eating for at least 2 hours and there are no particular side effects here. The next 
treatment for this cystocercosis means here uh, it is depending upon the individual means as i said the uh, the organism which is which has entered into the intestines it will travel through the portal system hepatic portal system and it will go and settle in number of areas and it will form as a cyst so whatever the cysts are formed so based on the number of cysts which were formed based on their viability the treatment is taken the treatment is modulated here so the treat medical treatment is more effective than the parenchymal cyst and less effective in intraventricular and subarachnoid subarachnoid and racemous cyst so if the cysts are in the parenchymal are in the parenchymal cyst so here the medical treatment is very effective so if if it is occurring in the intraventricular and uh, subarachnoid and racemous cyst so here uh, mo mostly medical treatment is preferred and sometimes the surgical interventions also can be taken place so albendazole and paracinquetol is also used here albendazole and paracinquetol they are both are effective in the treatment and the 10 to 15 grams uh, milligrams per kg body weight is given and the albendazole is given twice daily with the fatty meal so the duration of the treatment if you see here it is unsettled and 7 to 14 days it may be sufficient for uh, some patients uh, in some cases it may go out up to 28 days also and if they feel that the treatment is necessary more treatment is necessary the treatment can be repeated back so coming to the so this one we have we have seen here if you see medical treatment in the parenchymal cysts are more effective so what about the intraventricular and subarachnoid and racemous cysts so if you see here in case of the intraventricular or subarachnoid cyst we are giving the parents in vital, which is given as 50 mg per kg body weight per day in three divided doses it is given for 15 days and uh, albendazole it is the drug of choice because co-administration of the albendazole and steroid to treat the inflammation it will result in the increased albendazole absorption um, but when it is compare, combined to the use of the parents in vital and steroid it will greatly decrease the plasma level of the paranzequitol. So, here both the drugs are given with the fatty meals and uh, what it will do is it will increase the absorption of the drugs mainly from 4-fold to 5-fold. So, this is regarding the teniasis, tenia sagnita and tenia solium. So, if you have any queries, you can drop them in the comment box. Thank you so much for listening. Please, if you like the content, please like, share and subscribe the channel. Thank you so much.